Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to talk with you a little bit today about uh, Myers-Briggs type indicator related kinds of issues that I often see when I'm working with clients to um, accurately verify their true type. You know, one of the things that Myers-Briggs people say, you know, so the people who've created the assessment and keep all the statistics and do their research around uh, results and all of that kind of thing, the testing, one of the things that they say or they emphasize is that 25% of the time that a person takes this assessment, whether it's a paper pencil test, the online assessment, you name it, 25% of the time the results are inaccurate. And so that is why they emphasize that you have to have the follow-up verification session in order to really truly get accurate type. Now what I have actually seen to be far more true in my practice is that only 25% of the time are the results that someone um, gets when they take this assessment. Only 25% of the time are the results actually accurate. So actually consistent with true type. And there's a very, very good reason why that's the case. You know, when I work in my practice, I work a lot with the Myers-Briggs type indicator. I look, work a lot with the Enneagram. Uh, that's another personality typology system. And the reason that I use these, these two tools uh, that are incredibly powerful tools is because I feel like they give us a really amazing jumping off place between who a person really is, who they were designed to be, our essence, which is reflected in your Myers-Briggs type, and our defense system, our, uh, the way we protect our vulnerability in the world, which is, is more reflective of a person's Enneagram type. Now, both communities, Myers-Briggs type community and the Enneagram community, they, they, they think that they've cornered the market, right? So they think that they've come up with this one tool that will encompass and tell you absolutely there is everything there is to know about who you are as a person. And make no doubt, each tool is an incredibly um, uh, amazing tool to bring and build self-awareness. However, when you use them without taking in consideration of the influence of the other, you only get um, partial information about what's really happening inside of who you are. And so what I like to do is to put them together in my practice to, to come up with both who we were designed to be, our essence, and what our defense system looks like, right? Because we all have one, whether we're aware of it or not, and it's operating about 90% of the time. And so what I have found in my practice is when you put these two tools together, they become incredibly powerful and rich together. And they give us some really amazing diving off information about these really two uh, unconscious places inside of us, our essence and our defense structure. And why that's important is because when we're walking around operating out of our defense system, there's only one criteria for life decisions. It is no more emotional pain. So it's not asking things like, what do I want to be when I grow up? How do I like to be treated? Is this really what I want? Is this going to feel satisfying? Our defense system, our Enneagram system inside of us doesn't bother itself with those questions. It is only about how do I survive emotionally? To get answers to all of those other questions, we have to be able to access our essence, which is reflected in the Myers-Briggs type indicator. And there's lots of really um, powerful tools to be able to do that. It, it, suffice to say, it's not something we can cognitively do. We can't just think our way in and out of one of these two uh, parts inside of us, which is why only 25% of the time that someone takes the Myers-Briggs type indicator assessment, are the results actually accurate? Are they actually congruent? The majority of the time, I find that the way a person scores is not indicative of true type because without a doubt, the Enneagram part, your defensive structure is going to answer a lot of those questions, your Myers-Briggs types questions. There's just no way to keep those two places separate inside. So without having someone who can help verify your results, someone who's trained in both systems of personality and understands the nuances that happen when they come together, it's hard to say that your type is gonna be accurate on either end, Myers-Briggs or Enneagram because I've seen it in both communities. I've seen people in the Myers-Briggs type world who um, 
walk around um, professing that they're a particular type and you know in my professional opinion that it's not true you know in fact um, I've presented at the International Association for Psychological Types annual conferences and it's amazing to me the number of people that walk around thinking they're a particular preference or a particular type and all other evidence, visceral body, physiological, behavioral, cognitive evidence is pointing to a very different type. And it's the same in the Enneagram community as well. So many people think they're a particular Enneagram type, but when you really look at the application and motivation behind the, the, the things they do and think and project out into the world, they're not actually that Enneagram type. So this is something that I see happen a lot in my practice is that people get mistyped both for their Myers-Briggs as well as their Enneagram. And the value of being accurately typed is is amazingly uh, tenfold, right? Uh, once we learn about being you know, our true type, uh, things feel easier. It makes sense. We can learn how to support ourselves more specifically. We understand uh, exactly how we interact in relationships and what kinds of environments we need to thrive. You know, our parenting styles, our leadership styles, our learning styles. And I want to tell you a quick little story about uh, myself when I originally was typed and same kind of thing right I was mistyped I was typed as a sensor and for a couple of years uh, before I uh, was able to find someone who could put the two together I believed I was a sensor but it all along just didn't feel like it fit it felt like a, a piece of clothing I was trying to put on and force myself to wear even though it wasn't my style or my taste and when I finally connected with a clinician who put these two tools together, the Myers-Briggs and the Enneagram, and I realized I'm not a sensor, I am an intuitive. Wow, it was like this moment. It, 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 everything, all of my life to that point, it just, it sort of all locked in and fit and it all made sense, not necessarily just in my brain, but in my body. It was like somebody had unlocked a key and, um, everything suddenly made sense to me. So there's an incredible amount of power that comes when you learn how to be typed, accurately typed according to your type. So if this is interesting to you or you'd like to talk more about it, let's chat. Give me a call. We'll, we'll spend a little time talking about type and, and even doing some cursory assessment of your type. And, and uh, you know, if you're someone who's already been typed, we can certainly do some verification work on that. Um, but it's, it's powerful stuff, folks. And I just felt like I wanted to let you know that there um, is a lot of mistyping that happens in the Myers-Briggs. And like I always tell everybody, I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't care what type of person is, Myers-Briggs type or Enneagram type, makes me no difference. It's just really important to me to get it spot on and to get it right. So again, thanks for watching. Be safe, be well, and bye for now.